Hello everyone, Kyle here from Wide Awake PH, and today's episode we'll be talking about the Kono Dripper. So I spotted this dripper in Green Hills Promenade a few weeks ago, and I was really, really curious to try it out. I've spotted it in many coffee enthusiast communities, forums, and chats, and you know, I was like, I'm here already, it's there, why not buy one and give it a shot? And honestly, I had pretty low expectations buying into this thing. I'm really skeptical when it comes to coffee equipment. Um, I find that there's a lot of marketing jargon, a lot of promises made, but not, not all the products in the market live up to the hype or to what their ads say about the product. So... Uh, when I bought it, I wasn't that excited. But, <laughs> on the flip side, I'm always excited to try something new with, with my coffee, with, with, like, with my coffee experience. So, the moment we got home, I brewed up uh, Brazil Veloso, one of our favorites here in Team Wide Awake. And, you know, I just used my standard go-to V60 recipe and I was blown away. I was like, what the hell? Why does this coffee taste so good? I was stumped. So <laughs> I took the time to find out what was going on in my brew and why my first brew tasted so good with the Connell Dripper. So that's what we'll be talking about in this video. So let's go and take a look at the form factor of this Connell Dripper. You know, at first glance, it's a very unassuming thing. It looks like your ordinary conical plastic dripper. Nothing much special to it. But when you take a look closely at the inside of this brewer, you will notice that there are no ribs here on the side of the walls of the Kono. And that they only placed the ribs here deep on the inside of the dripper. So what does this mean and how does it affect our brew? Well, this means that when you place a filter paper on the Kono Dripper, it will create a suction or a vacuum seal all around the upper portion of the dripper. And what this means is that water and coffee will not pass down the sides of the dripper. This means that this dripper increases the probability of an even extraction just because it removed the ribs from the sides. But of course, additionally, the dripper does have ribs in the bottom area of the, of the dripper. And what that does is it still uh, gives it a decent flow rate so that the total brew time won't be so long. You know, you won't have to wait 4 minutes just to make 280 to 300 ml of, of coffee. So for me, for my water setup and my, uh, and my paper filter setup, I'm getting a total brew time of around 2 minutes, 30 seconds to 3 minutes, 15 seconds, depending on the recipe and the bean that I'm using. So the Kono's design basically allows you to create really well-balanced, delicious cups of coffee consistently. And I think it is this consistency that is the main feature or the, the best feature of this brewer. What do I mean by consistency? What I mean is, it allows you to easily taste and perceive every little difference you do when you're brewing. So given that you've already dialed in your, 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 your setup, you know what temperatures you want to use, you know what grind size you're going to be using, and you're familiar with your gear, you, this brewer really lets you taste um, whatever difference you do. So for example, you brew this cup of coffee at 92 degrees and you grind it at this grind size. That's your base case. So when you adjust the temperature up or when you adjust it down or when you adjust your grind size up, when you adjust your grind size down, it allows you to really perceive that. And that is such a huge difference compared to something like this, which is the classic V60. So. My main problem with the V60, even if it's so popular, is that it is not the most beginner-friendly or easy-to-use brewer. 
So the problem with the V60 is that it's a it's kind of temperamental, meaning if you're not on point with your pouring structure, if not if you're not on point with your grind size, right? Or if you're not swirling properly and in the same way you swirled the last time, then you're not gonna get this exact same result you did from your last brew. Meaning your technique and your brewing parameters have to be really dialed in for you to get consistent results. Meaning a cup of coffee that tastes the same as the last one you brewed, given that you did the exact same thing. But so in my experience, even if I do everything the exact same thing, um, I don't get coffees that taste the same with this thing. But with the Kono, I do. And I think that is its best selling point. An example of the Kono in action is uh, when I was dialing in our new Mount Apple White Honey Coffee. So I brewed that coffee every single day for two weeks and I played around with it with the Kono dripper just so I could understand that coffee uh, before selling it on the web shop and so I could also understand how consistent the Kono dripper is. So what I found is that whenever I decrease my normal brew temp of 94 to 92, I taste the enhanced acidity. If I move from 94 to 96, I get enhanced sweetness. When I grind coarser, I taste my coffee to be a little bit weaker. When I grind it finer, my total brew time lengthens and I can taste notes of over extraction, meaning the coffee is a little bit more close, somewhat more bitter. I've also been playing around with the brew ratios. So I typically go for a moderate 1 is to 16 brew ratio. But with the Kono, I tried going 1 is to 15, 1 is to 15.5, 1 is to 16, and all the way up to 1 is to 17. And I could really taste a difference in the flavor intensity with each brew ratio. And depending on the coffee and depending on the kind of strength you like, you could really find something to your tastes with the Kono. So all in all, when I get the brew just right, I find the crisp, vibrant acidity from the V60, the flavor clarity from the V60, but also the really nice texture and body you get from a flat bottom dripper like a Kalita Wave. So this makes the Kono dripper a really great tool to add in your brewing arsenal. Also, I would really recommend the Kono dripper to anyone. I think regardless of your brewing experience, you can find something to love here with the Kono dripper because of its consistency. It will really allow you to explore the flavors present in the coffees you're buying and it can really enhance your brewing experience. So, all in all, I'm really, really impressed with the Kono Dripper and I would highly recommend it to anyone who doesn't have it in their brewing arsenal. But I would also most especially recommend it to people who are new to coffee and are kind of intimidated with all these drippers that you can find in the market and you know the relatively high skill level you need to make the most out of a v60 this will be your best friend thank you all for watching today's episode have a great day